Welcome back. Israel doesn't produce big ticket airplanes, helicopters, and warships, yet it's managed through a full spectrum of cutting edge technologies to secure a major share of the Indian arms market, right behind Russia and the United States. Here's our report. Shalom. <laughs> Israel rolled out the red carpet this week for Narendra Modi, the first ever Indian prime minister to visit the Jewish state. The pomp, circumstance, and personal attention lavished on the Indian premier by Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu rivaled that of the recent visit here by U.S. President Donald Trump, reflecting Israel's desire to fortify its expanding partnership with New Delhi. Prime Minister, we share a bond of democracy and creativity, a deep respect for the past, a boundless optimism for the future. And it's in this spirit, my friend Narendra, in this spirit of close cooperation and deepest friendship that I welcome you here to our home in Jerusalem. This year marks a quarter century of formal diplomatic ties between India and Israel, ties that have significantly expanded since Modi took office in May of 2014. Fueled by threats from radical Islamic terror, rockets and missiles, and the need for border controls and cybersecurity, the two nations are expanding military and security ties at an unprecedented pace. And while both leaders of their respective right-wing nationalist governments sought to highlight during Modi's visit here the myriad non-military aspects of their relationship, it is defense trade and security cooperation that continues to dominate the bilateral agenda. As such, we must resolutely oppose the evils of terrorism, radicalism, and violence that plague our time. Israeli arms sales to India predate by decades the formal ties established in 1992. Throughout the Cold War, India, as head of the non-aligned movement, consistently sided with the PLO and Israel's Arab and Muslim adversaries worldwide. But that didn't dissuade New Delhi from quietly acquiring Israeli weapons, which it used in its wars with Pakistan in 1965 and 1971, and in its border conflict with China in 1962. In 1999, when India and Pakistan, by then nuclear powers, went to battle once again, this time in the mountains of Kargil, Israel provided drones, precision munitions, targeting systems, and even satellite imagery that helped push Pakistani troops and Kashmiri separatists back beyond the line of control. Israel was rewarded for its efforts by the ruling BJP party at the time with a stream of high-profile arms sales, including a $1 billion deal for Falcon aerial early warning planes and ministerial-level visits, which culminated in the September 2003 summit in New Delhi between Indian Prime Minister Vajpayee and Ariel Sharon. It was the first state visit between leaders of the two countries. Since then, Israeli and Indian defense cooperation has steadily progressed, even as New Delhi furthers its security ties with several Mideast partners, including the UAE, Oman, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and Iran. This is a, a very long cooperation that uh, that's for several decades now. We're working together uh, with uh, all of the Indian administrations and users for many, many projects that we are good doing together. And together we are building uh, the wall and we are building the capabilities of, uh, of uh, India and Israel together. In the decade prior to Modi's election, defense trade grew from a few hundred millions of dollars annually to nearly one billion dollars. But it was subtle, given the policy of the ruling coalition at the time, not to antagonize India's 180 million strong Muslim minority or its ties to Gulf states. In addition to a full spectrum of arms sales, the two countries quietly embarked on extremely sensitive collaborative projects, including a joint air defense system and the January 2008 launch from India of Israel's first radar spy satellite. We are utilizing all the, the, the know-how that we are uh, doing for many years uh, to, produ to produce the systems in India. And by doing that, uh, we are actually doing the offset required uh, by the Indian ad administration. Today, defense trade between the Modi government and Israel steadily exceeds $1 billion per year, even as the United States and Russia are lobbying hard to carve out a greater share of the Indian market.
Israel's state-owned Rafael beat out U.S. giant Lockheed Martin for an estimated $1 billion worth of anti-tank missiles. And the firm, like Elbit Systems, another top-tier Israeli company, is solidifying its in-country presence through numerous joint ventures and local investment. But by far the biggest driver of Israeli Indo-defense trade is state-owned IAI. It was the first Israeli firm to dive into the Indian market, where it has generated some $10 billion in defense business over the past 15 years, nearly $5 billion alone from joint development of a sea and land-based air defense system known here in Israel as Barak 8. This uh, system is being development, development uh, under an umbrella between the two governments, the Israeli government and the Indian government, for the, for the defense of the two nations. So it's very important to us, it's very important to the Indian administration, and both of us, uh, the Indian uh, vendors and uh, IAI and its vendors, doing the best in order to, uh, to, um, to uh, take the Mr. Modi initiative into uh, the next phase of uh, doing a uh, project together, uh, taking the technology to the higher steps. We'll take a short break and be back with our interview with Yaakov Amidror, former Israeli National Security Advisor. Please stay with us.